Growing up, I played baseball a lot. Once I started getting a little bit older, I wasn't gonna cut it as a pitcher. I mean, I didn't have the arm strength. I didn't have the arsenal. I mean, I think I could only throw like three pitches. I threw a fastball, a curveball that, let's be honest, probably broke like only 50% of the time. And I threw a changeup. I liked playing outfield. I liked playing catcher. But I did start to realize though, that um, I wasn't getting injured like my pitcher friends. My pitching friends, you know, they started getting shoulder pain, elbow injuries, blowing out arms. I never had this experience in the outfield or as a catcher. So I was always kind of wondering why that is, you know, is it because of the pitches that they threw? Like the, the ones that I didn't even try to throw uh, when I was a pitcher? Is it the frequency that they were pitching at that I never got, never got to those numbers before? Well, now, Looking back at it now as a biomechanist, as a graduate student studying biomechanics, I feel like I can answer this question. And with the amount of research that I've did over the last couple of weeks, I've figured it out. And it starts with the mechanics of a pitch. Paven Smith. Who takes strike three? Two, two. Got him looking. Frozen. Strike three. One, two, come. Struck him out. 103. 103. Now, the first phase that we need to look at when looking at pitching mechanics is the windup. And essentially, the windup is just to start the initiation of the pitch, as well as generate a lot of potential energy. After the windup, you have the stride. Now, the stride is still generating energy, although we're moving the body in a certain way to get to the most optimal way to pitch the baseball. Almost simultaneously to the stride phase is the arm cocking phase. And in the arm cocking phase, we're generating potential energy still, just now this time through the actual arm. This seamlessly goes into the arm acceleration phase. Now that the arm is cocked and ready to go, we gotta accelerate it, it's ready. All this potential energy has been building, 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 and now it's time to all put it in through the, the shoulder and the arm. In order to do this, we're starting to rotate the arm, we're abducting it a little bit to get that good release angle. And as we're extending this elbow, as we're going through this arm acceleration, we're increasing the moment arm here between the axis of rotation, our shoulder, and the ball. Increasing the moment arm is essentially just increasing the radius of something rotating around something else And this is gonna increase the torque or basically the angular force that we can put onto the ball Once the ball is about to leave the hand We're gonna start the arm deceleration phase now at this moment the elbow is fully flexed We're getting the largest moment arm that we can here So yeah, that's the basic mechanics of a baseball pitch and if you put it all together and do it yourself You're gonna get Yeah, so maybe not the uh, best idea to go out there without knowing some different pitches and how they work. Let's check this out. So for a major league pitcher, there's four main pitches that are thrown. You got your fastball, your curveball, your slider, and your changeup. For the fastball, it's essentially what it sounds like. It is a fastball. The goal of the fastball is to get past the batter as quick as possible. Next one we got is the curveball. Now the curveball is known as an off-speed pitch, which is basically that it is gonna be slower than the fastball. It's designed to throw the batter off. You see, the way that the curveball is thrown is with a different grip. Now this grip is going to elicit a spin off of the fingertips as the ball is released, which in association with air resistance will create this translational change of the ball as it gets to the plate. Specifically, the curveball is going to look really loopy in comparison to the fastball. Essentially, it's going to start high and then break to go low. Now, a curveball is a little bit different than a slider, in the sense that a slider is almost like the combination of a curveball and a fastball together. The way that I mean this is that it has the spin in an off-speed pitch, like a curveball, 
but it's faster than the curveball. It's using more velocity like the fastball. But since it's faster with a higher velocity, it's going to significantly break away or towards the batter depending if it's a righty or a lefty versus this loopy arc that the curveball has. And finally, there's the changeup, a very slow off-speed pitch that really doesn't have a break in the ball. It's just supposed to fool the batter by being significantly slower than the fastball. Now, most believe that throwing curveballs and sliders, especially at younger ages, are going to elicit higher frequency of injury rates within the shoulder and elbow. However, researchers found that that's not necessarily the case. Biomechanical studies have found no differences in load between a fastball, curveball, and slider. You see, these researchers can use what's called kinematic and kinetic data collected in various laboratory settings in order to see the amount of forces put on not only the ball, but then different parts of the body and joints. Often, these joint-related forces are just called moments, which is just the force moving around a specific axis at a given point in time. Joint moments can be calculated for each pitch, allowing researchers to know which ligaments have higher load between the pitches, with greater loads on the ligament showing higher chances of injury. Interestingly, some of these studies even showed that the fastball, the slider, and the curveball were all relatively similar in terms of their biomechanics. But you know what wasn't similar? Was the changeup. You see, the changeup elicited a lower load on the joint mechanics than the other three pitches combined. Whoa, not combined. Just the other three pitches. <laughs> However, this research is still really controversial in the realm of pitching mechanics. I mean, we haven't really even considered the frequency at which pitches are being thrown, especially among the youth, where if we're throwing curveballs and sliders at you know, high and high loads and volumes? I mean, how is that going to work with their developmental bodies and developmental muscles? I mean, there are many clinical reports that suggest that excessive repetition of these baseball pitches are going to have soft tissue failure for all levels of pitchers, not just the youth and not just MLB. I mean, everywhere in between. So even though some of these studies are contradicting each other, I feel like there's still enough here to take something away from this. Let's take a moment and talk about the changeup for a minute. Because the changeup was significantly lower than all the other joint moments and mechanics for the other three pitches for the shoulder and the elbow. Now, this result would suggest that throwing more changeups would elicit less load on the arm and have a higher likelihood of reducing injury rates of these ligaments in the shoulder and the elbow. Now, I have the 2021 stats pulled up right here on my computer. And for the MLB, fastballs were thrown 56% of the time, sliders were thrown 17% of the time, curveballs were thrown 9% of the time, and changeups were thrown 13% of the time. Now, it's better than a curveball at 9%, but the fastballs and the sliders, especially combined, that's about 70% of the time a pitcher is throwing either a fastball or a slider. Well, only 13% of the time is a changeup? Well, why? You know, if it's such a reduction in injury risk, I feel like we would want to throw more changeups to keep our pitchers healthy, to keep them on the mound, to keep them off of the injury reserve list. I mean, what's going on here? Well, <laughs> you got to think about the game. Right, and not just through the perspective of a biomechanist or an athletic trainer. You gotta think about the game as the game. And in the game, if you're throwing a changeup 50% of the time, you're gonna get shelled. <laughs> you're you're gonna be sent down to the single A. I mean, you're gonna get out of you know professional baseball, semi-professional baseball, if you're throwing it that many times because people at that level they're just gonna know. They're going to know to expect it, you know, they're they're going to be sitting on that changeup. They're going to be waiting for it, right? So increasing the percentage of the changeup would be better for the injury risk and everything like that and keeping players on the mound. But it also is a dual sword here where, you know, you're on the mound because you're not injured. But when you're on the mound, you're getting rocked. So, I mean, there's definitely a fine line 
that you gotta draw here between what is good for the player in terms of injury prevention, but then also what is gonna make the player the most successful that they can be. In order to throw a changeup, you're gonna have to throw as many times, you know, more fastballs or sliders in order to make the changeup a more of an effective pitch. So there's definitely this divide here. It's it's this give and take a little bit here that we need to consider as you know biomechanists, as sports scientists, as athletic trainers to kind of think. Well, what what are we doing here to benefit? But then also, what are we doing here to potentially harm the statistics of our team, of our players? You know, what are we doing? <laughs> I think I'm starting to realize why as a kid, I never really got injured when I pitched. You know, maybe because I didn't have the amount of frequency and maybe because I never threw a slider or anything like that or my curveball really wasn't that good. But I honestly think, I think my fastball was just other people's changeups. So it just worked out that way, you know? All right, I'm going to end this video off on a stinker joke like that, but I hope you enjoyed watching. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>